Let's start with an empty scene. So delete everything, create a new plane, scale it up and go to the edit mode. Select one of the edges and extrude it up on the Z axis. Then select the corner edge and create a bevel with Ctrl B and add a lot of segments. Last step is shade it smooth. Now let's add the icons. If you want to import your favorite icon, you need to have the icon as a vector file in SVG format, which means scalable vector graphics. If you don't have one, I can provide you with some websites which you can download it from. They will be linked in description. Now, once you have imported all of your icons, select one and go to the curve properties in the right side. Then scroll down to the geometry section and increase the extrude slider. This will work as a solidify modifier for the curves. To make the icon more pop out, extrude every surface. After extrusion, enable snapping feature and snap the extruded curves on the surface so there is no gap between those two objects. Now because all the icons are different, I would like to add an order to the composition. So I will put this extruded curve with beveled corners under every icon. I want all of them to be looking the same but you don't have to follow my steps here. If you want a different style or different composition, go for it. Now the powerpoint icon has a lot of parts so I will be extruding some of them more than others. And since I have to deal with more layers here, the letter P will be extruded less than the rest of the geometry because I don't want to go too insane. I would say that for this case it would be more aesthetically pleasing if we have a variety in the extrusion amount. After extruding is done, we will parent all individual icon groups to the empty. This will allow you to better navigate the rotation, keyframing and animation if you want to do a video for example. You should set the origin to the center of the group and snap the 3D cursor on it. Select all the objects in the group and then the empty. Then with Ctrl P you can parent the group to the active object, which is the empty. Now if we view the scene in rendering tab, the shading is good but it looks hard and too solid. So we will add roundness on corners to make a smooth transition with reflection details from the environment. You can easily add bevel in curve properties inside geometry section. Just a little ease chamfer is enough. Now in this work I was thinking about the materials I'll be using and I came with the idea that these icons should be naturally soft looking so they feel more user friendly. This can be later helpful to create an outstanding user interface or concept design for operating system. You can copy the colors with an eyedropper or you can copy the diffuse color from the default vector shader. For example, the powerpoint and the blender group was quite easy to remake. Every part has different but solid colors, but as you know, Instagram has a white logo on a gradient background. So I went on Google and searched for Instagram gradient and just downloaded one that was looking the best. And because we have to project the image on a geometry, we need to create a UV map. But the logo is still a curve, which cannot be unwrapped since it has no faces. So we go to the object button in the top left corner, select convert and convert the curve to mesh. Now go to edit mode, select all faces and press U and project from U. Make sure that you are using UV vector output in the texture coordinates node. Otherwise, you won't be able to see the texture being projected the right way. Also scale the UV map if it's too small. And I basically did the same process for the Meta logo as well. The only difference was that the Meta logo was made out of multiple parts overlaying each other. But I managed to fix that with Boolean modifier with a union operation. By now we are done with the icon shading. But we still have to deal with the curved pads. So let's make a translucent material. For that delete the principal BSDF and add a glass BSDF. Plug it to the material output and increase the roughness. Also be sure that the white is 100% white. Lastly I have decided to rebuild the scene because I wanted the icons to float in the air. Which in my opinion is better because we are not rendering everything from the same angle. I also wanted to adjust the glass material so it carries the color of the logo which I guess is more representative. Now you can do whatever you want, you have a 3D icon group with materials and you can easily transform them with the empty. By the way, this is the final denoise to render without any post processing and color correction. If you enjoyed this video and you watch it till end, I'm quite sure you are the person who likes 3D stuff as well. So if you learned something from my video, you can repay me this by just clicking on the subscribe or share button to help me to reach more people or write a comment to help me to make my content better for you. See you in an upcoming video which is already on its way, so stay alerted.